Asana, just like her mama, feed me papaya. Oshuna no ya, she no push over. You should know better if you come in here. How your skin glow, what a melanin. How your bright so, how were you thinking? You make my heart go ting 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 ting. Oh yeah. Nudge makes space for makers. Hello and welcome to this special event, Nudge Now. That beautiful music that you were hearing before the program started was Cassandra by Freetown Collective and Static. Hello and welcome again. My name is Jabari Fraser. We are streaming live on the Nudge Caribbean YouTube channel and I'm simply here to facilitate the conversation today. If you're looking at this broadcast, it's because you have an interest in entrepreneurship and seeing quality, small and micro enterprises grow and blossom and have impact in our communities. Or maybe you've stumbled across this live and now we've caught you. You're curious to find out more. Well, I'll tell you a bit more now. Nudge is a community that connects makers to the marketplace. Nudge connects fledgling entrepreneurs to seasoned campaigners. It's a social enterprise ensuring that country, culture and community profit. Nudge was started in 2020 by social entrepreneur Anya Ayanchi and Senior Vice President of People and Culture at the Massey Group, Julie Avi. Their desire to encourage interest in the Caribbean's micro and small enterprises was the spark that created Nudge. We'll be hearing from them and Massey President and CEO Gervais Warner. Together, they are part of the Board of Directors of Nudge Caribbean. We'll also be hearing from two of our very exciting entrepreneurs from St. Lucia and Barbados. Simply put, Nudge as a community provides one-on-one -on -one coaching, training, and workshops. It also offers prominent market stall access for entrepreneurs to showcase their goods in high traffic areas. Importantly, Nudge helps developing businesses to seek financing and creates an encouraging environment for businesses to grow and receive the support of their communities. Nudge works with a cadre of entrepreneurs selected for their passion, commitment to social causes, and considerations of environmental sustainability. The Nudge community of entrepreneurs in the Caribbean spans Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, and St. Lucia. Now that we have a basic understanding of what Nudge is, let's have a look at this short film about the work that has been going on and the raison d'etre for the community and hear the experiences of those involved. <laughs>
Micro is Mighty is an affirmation that each individual brand has a story behind it. Every single product has a person behind it. Every single service has a provider who has a story behind it. And so how do we bring those stories to the forefront? How do we reflect the value really and truly? You know, we're, we're sort of a mirror for that mightiness. Nudge is a platform where we are supporting small businesses to achieve their potential. In essence, we are aiming to, and we've already begun, to sort of leverage big business resources to support smaller entities and uh, connect the dots between these, you know, currently different worlds, but more and more um, sort of merging worlds to be able to harness the incredible amount of talent and skill that this region has. Imagine a world where everyone knows what makes them great and there is a structure that allows them to realize that. That doesn't just change their lives, but the lives of everybody around them. From what I've seen from what Nudge has been doing for me and continues to do for me, is having faith in me. They have given me opportunities that I never even thought I'd be a part of. You know, during the pandemic, I couldn't, you couldn't do a lot. But just knowing that you had this team working on your side in the background, it was just so comforting to know that, you know, even though I can't sell right now, even though I can't go out to the markets right now, there is a group of people that are waiting for the quickest opportunity to help me. I see Nudge adding value to Worky and, and assisting us in our journey, not only through the funding, which we obviously really need, as a startup, um, but also the, the network and the ecosystem that they are trying to develop. Our goal of Contemporary Cavemen is to transform Lavantil into an agricultural hub. Nudge impacted us and the community very positively in that we were able to make a lot more points of contact and that just allowed visibility throughout Lavantil. As a female entrepreneur, a creative entrepreneur, and a small business owner in many different areas, I've realized that we struggle to be heard. And I think my role in Nudge is to come from that place consistently and remember that the entrepreneurs generally know what they need. So our role is really just to listen and to go back to our resources and our networks and see how can we best serve this community. This is an opportunity for, for us at Bassi to really live our values. We say we're a force for good, which we are. And I think that as an organization, we always have a duty to give back. We're in a fortunate position to do so. And it's an obligation that we need to fulfill and to live up to. Nudge's mission is quite large. <laughs> aspirational and full of imagination. There are so many people that have so many things to offer, so much talent in our region that is just ready for the, for the next stage. And there's also so many people with the privilege, with the connection, with the resources to help make that happen. The Fine Music Program is a catalyst for everyone entering the Nudge program that allows for a new thinking, a reawakening of, of how they think about their life and their career. I'm in the technology space and really focused on growing the overall technology ecosystem across the Caribbean. Nudge is building an e-commerce and learning platform. The learning platform really is meant to collate so many of the things that the entrepreneur needs to learn, but it's in so many different disparate places. And so we want to bring together a lot of the questions that entrepreneurs have around various different topics that they can find the answers to them in one place, as well as find mentorship, find partners, find these opportunities to connect with people in a more centralized area. It's been a, a true year of discovery this year, laying a foundation in, in so many important ways and I think with, with the incredible amount of support that we've gotten, we get now to really build on that foundation. The Nudge experience for me has been awesome. The morals really align with what our morals are in terms of community, food security, environmentally consciousness. 
That's, we need more of that. It's to see the community that's in front of them and they realize the importance of small businesses. It is a community. It, there is so much love. I really want to say thank you. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for seeing the stuff that I didn't see. Continually pushing to be everything that I could be. Wow, did you see that? Imagine a world where everybody knew what made them great. A really inspiring, motivational, and moving piece of cinema there, that short film produced by Nudge, a collaboration with Oliver Milne, filmmaker. You know, it was a really inspiring piece, and we got a sense of the passion behind some of the entrepreneurs in a, a, a wide range of fields, from farming and small gardening to urban graffiti apparel, body products, beauty products, a really wide and interesting range of products there, all part of the Nudge community. So now that we've had a look at that film, we're going to start the conversation now. We're going to start with Anya Ayangji, who is the co-founder of Nudge, uh, a social entrepreneur, as she calls herself. Anya, welcome. Thank you for being with us here today. Tell us about Nudge. I mean, you've already got... We got a sense of what what your 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 involvement in Nudge is from the film, but give it to us live, please. Sure, of course. Well, first of all, thank you so much for being here with us today, Jabari. It's wonderful to have this opportunity to share about Nudge with as many of you who are watching. Thank you for joining us. Nudge Caribbean is a social enterprise supporting micro and small and medium enterprises from the Caribbean who have mindful and sustainable businesses. And my role as co-founder um, is to bring as much of my experience as an entrepreneur to the table and strategize how best do we, as we said in the film, listen to this community, hear their needs and co-create the programs that we have the resources to create with them. So it's been an incredible journey. I think the film really sort of encapsulates the joy of this experience and the tremendous amount of gratitude we have to our partners for bringing, helping us bring this to life. But of course, most of all to entrepreneurs for being a part of this community and this growing community across the region. Mm -hmm. So now you've been involved in many different initiatives. What was the trigger to help you conceptualize this movement called Nudge? It's best put as a meeting of the minds <laughs> with Julie Avey, my co-founder, and I. I was a judge at a Massey Innovation Tournament in 2017, um, and we continued a conversation through 2018, 2019 to be able to ideate from both of our individual, quite separate but aligned missions to serve this region as best as we can, knowing that we have a tremendous amount of reach through our, our sort of paired networks and wanting to to bring to life something that could have transformative effect. And so from my perspective as an entrepreneur, that was to serve the entrepreneurial community because there is a need for a more strengthened ecosystem for, for entrepreneurs to work and thrive and, and, and sustain and scale their businesses. And I'm sure Julie will share from her perspective what her motivation was, but we, at the heart of it, we just have tremendous value alignment. And I think the conversations that led us here and of course, the partnership, as I mentioned, um, with our partners, especially Massey, have given us the life to do this work. And I think, you know, we are as 
amazed as everybody else at the work that has evolved since then. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. How can starry-eyed entrepreneurs become part of this nudge community? Well, I think we are the ones who are starry-eyed, to be honest, <laughs> because we're so thrilled to work with such incredibly talented people who have such drive and passion behind their work. But for, for anyone new who would like to join the community, please go to nudgecaribbean.com. We have made sure that the website has as much information as possible about the the programs that we offer. The one that is most popular and is most seen is the market access program. And there is a registration form on the website so that you can apply. And know, of course, that even if you don't fit exactly the criteria, we are in a growing stage and we are welcoming as much feedback as to how we may serve the community beyond the programs that we currently have. So I'll just say, you know, as simple as go to the website, nudgecaribbean.com and register and ensure that we can follow up with you on, on how best we can serve you. And yeah, you said some interesting things there and I, I want to get back to them, but I just want to bring Julie Avi into the conversation now. Julie, as a co-founder of Nudge, um, how do you feel about this and how do you feel about the role that everyday people can possibly play in becoming part of this Nudge movement to build this community of entrepreneurs? Hi, Jabari. Thank you for the, um, thank you for the question. I feel quite humbled, quite emotional to have the film be aired. Um, it's been a conversation that's been, as Anya said, a few years in, in the making. But it's really just, it's, it's the privilege of being able to link the talent. There are, there are funding agencies, there are big businesses that want to do more to support our small businesses. And then the small businesses, these entrepreneurs have the talent. So um, it's just a privilege to be able to link them. And that's really the role that we have in this process. Okay. Is there a space for seasoned entrepreneurs and other types of collaborators to become part of this social enterprise? Absolutely. As Anya was saying, that we are young, we are a startup ourselves. And I want to acknowledge that there are many partners that have been doing this work for a long time, different markets, whether in Barbados, St. Lucia or Trinidad, um, different government agencies that are, that are doing amazing work in private sector. So, um, I think it's to get involved. Um, it's really on, a, on an individual basis as well, buying locally, um, supporting these entrepreneurs. That's really something that everyone can do. Um, another thing that I'd really like to encourage as we grow, we want to do more to support um, the entrepreneurs with mentorship, with coaching. So if there are people that would like to offer their skills, that they have time on their hands, they see that they would like to offer, we would love for them to join our community as well, because that is something that can make a huge difference in the success of these entrepreneurs in these small businesses. Mm -hmm. That point seems to link to something that Anya said a short while ago about value alignments. Anya, can you tell me a bit about that sort of value alignments and how, how these this community of, of uh, fairly new or recent entrepreneurs can connect with the more seasoned ones. Yes, actually, in the film, one of our partners, Kyle Maloney, who's co-founder of Tech Beach, mentioned an online platform that we will be launching shortly. And it will be geared towards, as I mentioned, our very popular program of the market access entrepreneurs and supporting these particularly um, commodity-based brands with the growth and scale of their businesses. And on this platform, we will be offering executive coaching, peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, and a range of the type of expert guidance that we have through significant research realized is one of the top needs of our community. And we realize as well that there's a lot of desire, as Julie mentioned, from the professional community, which we welcome <laughs> to um, join our community from the expertise side and bring your you know, seasoned approach to business to help our entrepreneurs scale at the rate that they deserve to, um, to sort of leapfrog beyond these, the obstacles that this that often you find in, in our um, entrepreneurial environment. And so that platform will eventually be available to the public, will certainly be available to our market access entrepreneurs. So joining um, that community is, gives you tremendous access, not just to the retail space, but also the education and capacity building and expert guidance. And can you tell me a bit more about this marketplace access that you've described for us? Uh, and, you know, how does this provide value for those entrepreneurs in Nudge? Tell us a bit more about that, please. 
Absolutely. So I'm so excited because we actually have entrepreneurs tonight to share from their perspective of what this program has offered them. But to be, make it simple, it is an uh, entry point into our very significant partner, Massey, Massey Stores, um, to be able to have products on shelves, but not necessarily on Massey Store shelves, but on Nudge branded shelving that gives you not only shelf access, which is highly coveted, but also all the training and um, support to be able to, to sell the product in a sustainable way, which is of course a huge part of the journey of a small brand. And there's a graduation from a market stall, which we now have in three islands, Trinidad, Barbados, and St. Lucia, to a gondola end, which we call the corner shop. Because um, as you can tell, the language around the brand is in incredibly authentically Caribbean, which is a big part of our mission, um, representing ourselves in the way that we wish to be seen. And, and then there's the ultimate graduation to Massey Stores shelves themselves, which is something that we're really excited to have just entered into that stage for some of our entrepreneurs. And we would like to continue to see the growth of a retail distribution through other partners. So beyond Massey Stores as well. And for now, we are very excited to be able to have that access for the community. Okay, sounds like a great point in time to bring in the CEO and president of the Massey, Store, Massey Group, Gervais Warner, who is a member of the board of Nudge. Uh, now, Gervais, Massey is a, a group, a company that is in the lives of everybody in Trinidad and Tobago and many across the Caribbean. What has made Massey want to get involved in Nudge? Well, Julie is a very uh, influential executive at Massey. <laughs> and when she and Anya had this idea of, um, you know, creating this mechanism that could help uh, people uh, start small businesses and be successful in them, uh, it was around the time we were seeing a lot of um, you know, difficulty in the economic space in Trinidad and Tobago and throughout the Caribbean and recognized that, you know, as people... Uh, uh, look to alternatives other than your job, um, that it was an opportunity to actually augment the entrepreneur class and uh, give people a, a boost in terms of being able to start their own business as an alternative to full-time employment. But I have to say that, uh, you know, this, this really burgeoned into a full-fledged, you know, all forms of entrepreneurial activity welcome uh, so that we could actually provide this nurturing environment. One of the things that we believe, and you know, it, it, you know, we went into the pandemic just as we just as we launched Nudge, is that um, you know there's a lot of difficulty and challenge that people face in their daily lives. And if we look at the economies of the Caribbean, throughout the Caribbean, there's a huge, huge role that uh, entrepreneurs and small business play in generating employment, creating livelihoods for people, and ultimately providing a vehicle by which people can you know, build a, a sustainable living for themselves, even build some wealth for themselves. And uh, I guess in our own enlightened self-interest, Javari, as you said, we are involved in motor vehicle sales, supermarkets, and pharmaceutical sales, and distribution of industrial gases and LPGs throughout the Caribbean. And we know that we, as a group of companies, do well when the rest of the society around us is also flourishing and thriving. And we could see in these, um, you know, pandemic, post-pandemic times that, uh, yeah, you know, we really needed to find a way to help, uh, at least we, we felt so for ourselves, you know, the, the smaller businesses, the, the, the micro enterprises are to be more successful and to, you know, be engines of growth in the economies throughout, throughout the Caribbean. So, you know, this is, this is really something that is near and dear to our heart because we have a purpose. Our group of companies has a purpose to be a force for good, creating value, transforming life. And if you really think about the opportunity that we have, and you'll hear some of the entrepreneurs uh, on this evening speak about their experience of working with Naju Hood, uh, uh, some of the people in, in, in the video and, and what a difference this has made to them and their businesses and the families and people around them. You know, this is, this is really a great opportunity to create value with people to transform uh, lives and livelihood. And it, it, it fits squarely with, with who we are as a, as a group of companies. And it's also, quite frankly, in our own enlightened self-interest, you know, our way of, 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 of if you like, um, 
uh, rekindling, uh, catalyzing uh, economic growth in our uh, Caribbean economies through you know, assistance and boosting and giving a nudge uh, to the entrepreneurial class uh, in all of our societies. Okay, you spoke a bit about creating value for the society, creating value for, for, for people, for people getting into business, but what exactly does a conglomerate like Massey get out of this? And do you see this as something that can possibly really be the catalyst for, for small and micro enterprises getting bigger and better and stronger? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So yes, 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 on multiple levels of that question, right? So um, first of all, we get a connection to our um, communities uh, that, you know, I think is irreplaceable, particularly uh, for people trying to do business. Uh, so, so as we interact and interface, and on that video, you saw David Afonso, who is the uh, executive chairman of our integrated retail portfolio. David sits down and spends hours with some entrepreneurs providing coaching to them on how to be successful in the retail space, uh, from merchandising to SKU management to uh, how you want to promote uh, uh, to being able to produce on a regular, it gives fantastic coaching of his, of his own time in doing that. But, you know, he's then able to learn from the entrepreneurs through those interactions and bring those learnings back into our own business as we think about how we take on um, uh, new products over our own procurement process. Uh, and then not to mention the fact that, you know, I think any large company, as he said in, 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 in uh, the video, you know, if they, if they don't already, they ought to feel some great obligation and responsibility for the society around them. And we do have, you know, a, a great privilege associated with the strength of our brand, the strength of our company. And uh, what good is that if we can't find meaningful ways to make contributions, right? And, you know, I have to tell you in our boardroom among our executives, uh, this is one of the favorite things that we are doing. It's one of the things that you know, people feel most uh, moved and, and, and motivated and fulfilled by uh, to be a part of being able to help society in this meaningful way. This is not a form of charity. This is a real form of contribution. And uh, so, you know, I guess, you know, in Maslow's, you know, hierarchy of, 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 of needs, you know, everybody wants to get to this fulfilling place where you're actually, uh, you know, uh, having the experience of purpose being fulfilled. And for us, nudges, it's purpose being fulfilled. And uh, quite honestly, there's no sweeter feeling in life than uh, being able to operate in that space. Okay, one final question for you, then, Javis. You know, as someone who's been involved in business and business administration for so many years, and certainly you've seen the nudge stalls across Massey stores. Uh, what do you see as, as the benefit for, for these entrepreneurs to have these, their products placed on these nudge stores across Massey stores in the region? Well, fortunately this afternoon, you're gonna get the opportunity to ask some entrepreneurs that question. Uh, for us, uh, uh, you know, what we think, you know, nudge provides in, in terms of the obvious is one market access, right? So. We are making our uh, 55 uh, store locations, I think probably getting close to 60 now, across the Caribbean available to small and micro um, uh, 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 merchandisers who would like to have the opportunity to get some foot traffic. That's just, that's just tremendous. I mean, that's one of the biggest challenges that any entrepreneur uh, would have. You know, it's nice to size the market, but how do I get access? How do I get people to know about my product? How do I get people to even try my product? So that's one huge, 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 uh, um, you know, uh, contribution that uh, Nudge provides. And of course, you know, it's, people have to go through a process, right? So you go, you've got to be qualified. You've got to take the coaching. Your product has to present in a particular way, et cetera, et cetera. So, but, but, so, so that's the second piece, right? So let's say that you, you come in and you, you don't even get selected. And you, 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 the process by which Nudge interacts with you, the learning that you get, and of course, the opportunity to come back again and, and, and improve. So there's a level of coaching and development, not theoretical classroom coaching. This is like, okay, we want to put you on our shelves. This is what you really need to do. So the opportunity to get 
that kind of practical insight and then even the opportunity to come back and say, listen, I did, I, I did what you said. I, you know, can, can I make the, and say, yeah, man, you're good. Let's come on in. Let's see how you do. Uh, that, that, that's, that's uh, you know, the other, the other big uh, uh, contribution. Um, and then uh, I think, again, on the video, you heard uh, Scott and Clark talking about um, the um, uh, Find Your Music program. So there, there's, like, we connect and, and, and try to help entrepreneurs really find this true expression of themselves. As I, you know, I go back to what I said about, you know, if you're living a life of purpose, you know, there's no sweeter feeling. So, you know, really trying to help entrepreneurs who are thinking about things, really connect what they do with what they have a passion for, what they felt they were put on this earth to do, um, so that, you know, you really are igniting a, 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 you know, like a bonfire in the hearts and spirits of people as they pursue these passions in life. And so I think that's another major major contribution that, 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 that we can provide. And the last one, Jabari, that I say is, is confidence, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's, when you're starting off, I mean, I started a, a small business when I, many, many years ago, I, I failed miserably, but that was all right. I found a good job. <laughs> <laughs> but it's lonely, man. And, you know, you don't know if what you're onto something that's in, any good and, you know, you can get a, a Massey or a Massey executive or some of other partners to listen to your pitch, to listen to your ideas, to, you know, encourage you. You know, you develop this, you know, confidence, this feeling that, oh, my goodness, you know, somebody's seeing some merit and worth in me and it's worth going on another day. I think there's huge value to entrepreneurs in that. And, uh, but I don't know, you're going to hear from them this afternoon. We'll just tell you if I'm talking good stuff or bad stuff. <laughs> I can't, I, can't, I can't really use the wood I wanted to use for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your input there, Gervais. Before we move on to the entrepreneurs, I just want to head back to Anya for a brief moment. Anya, tell me about the vision here to, to expand this project and really make it truly regional and regional and carry it to, to all corners of, of our Caribbean region. Absolutely. I think, well, first of all, I'm just, I'm so moved by all of Gervais's comments. And I think leaving off on where he um, just mentioned about confidence, and we've heard before from Prime Minister Mia Motley about cultural confidence of this region. I think that investing time, resources, energy, and attention to this community across the region, as I mentioned, we're already in Trinidad, Barbados, and St. Lucia Massey has an extensive footprint throughout the region that we are able and very lucky privileged rather to be able to leverage and in order to merge that sort of support that facilitates that level of confidence matched with these big business resources we have a tremendous opportunity to have a regional footprint not only from the business perspective which of course is primary to what we would like to support the entrepreneurs with but also with that cultural confidence and that sort of inner wellness and mindfulness for the individuals and how transformative that might be for the region as a whole is what we are banking on. So it's it's a real privilege to do this work, to do it with the partners that we have. And most of all, like I said in the beginning, to do it with the entrepreneurs themselves. Thank you so much, Anya. Really hear the passion in, in you know, in, in the comments uh, from the three of you and, uh, you know, the, the desire to get something really powerful for the community of entrepreneurs and for the wider Caribbean community. Thank you so much. Uh, now we're going to speak to two very exciting entrepreneurs from Barbados and St. Lucia. We have Danica Jean-Charles who of Datize. She's the managing director. Her business is out of St. Lucia and they specialize in acrylic paintings and resin pieces. And we also have Tamara Gibson of Native Caribbean in Barbados. Uh, she specializes in scents, essential oils, candles, all sorts of yummy smelling things. Uh, ladies, thank you very much for, for being here and for sharing your, your story with the rest of the Nudge community and the rest of the wider world. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Let's start with Danica. Danica, tell us a bit about your business, please. Tell us a name, what it means, and tell us how you started. My business is the Atize. Atize means art in Creole and D represents me, Danica. 
Um, I like to say that the Artise is everything artsy, creative, and fun. We specialize in resin items and acrylic paintings. Um, with our resin items, it gives you an opportunity to personalize almost everything because we have a wide variety from keychains to, to stationery to deco items. So it gives you that opportunity to create something that you think that would be necessary for your space or for your family. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. And I've seen the pieces. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, before we go on, I, I don't want to forget to do this. Can you just share your social media handles, your website with everyone? So maybe they could even go on and check out some of the items right now while they listen to your story. Okay, Instagram or d.atz and our website is that .com. So go check mm -hmm. us out. <laughs> okay, so tell me a bit about some of these acrylic um, paintings and resin items. What exactly do you mean for, for people who, who aren't seeing it just as yet or still trying to find your page online and so on? Could you describe it and, and describe how you've used these art pieces to make beautiful things for people to consume and for people to purchase? Okay, so for the resin, I, I like to say that the, the possibilities are endless with resin. Um, it's a liquid that when you mix together, it creates a plastic-like substance when it cures. So you could do any color, you could add any glitter, you could add sand, which we do for the, the, the tourists. And um, it gives you that opportunity to just create something that's you. Um, for, for the resin items, I like to introduce new things to the resin items. So I, I, I do glitter to the acrylic paintings and the different shapes. And I just like to give people a unique product that, that speaks to you, that you could change your space. You could um, give somebody that, that, that says, you know, something that's them, something, something that says, I, I am thinking of you. Yeah. <laughs> So tell me a bit about how you got started in this business and if you had that business spirit burning deep with inside of you for years and what, what really made you get involved in this? I think I always wanted to own a business. I just didn't know exactly what I was going to do. Um, but, but COVID really, that was one plus for me. COVID gave me the time to really soul search, I could say. Um, the acrylic paintings started at... I was just bored and I was looking for something to do, something new to explore. And I started with the acrylic paintings and that's when the Artisay really started. I just used to do random things because I was home and there was free time. And then my family and friends um, expressed interest in creating their own pieces. So they would send me, send me pieces and say, can I get this and can I get that? And that's how it really started to grow. And, and during this acrylic process, I remember coming across a video on, on YouTube of this love sign with lights and it really i was like i would love to have this in my house <laughs> so i i again i was i was idle so i ordered this starter pack of resin i just explored i started doing little earrings and little keychains and everybody was fascinated because i think now the uh, the awareness of resin is growing but initially a lot of people did not know about resin so when they used to see that you could create these things they were amazed and that's how the resin started. And I started with doing little keychains and earrings, like I said. And I think now <laughs> I really overdid it. So <laughs> I have quite a bit of molds. I, I do decor. I have a wide range of wood signs. I saw love. And then I started seeing blessed and the live, laugh, love. And I really went overboard with the molds. So we have a wide variety of items. So you could buy what really suits you or the person that you're gifting. You certainly sound inspired, not idle. Tell me a bit about some of the ways you've been promoting your products and, and some of the places that you've been selling your products. So we are mainly on Instagram and I like to create something unique to everybody. I think um, the resin community is growing. So there are a lot of people on online doing resin but I try to offer something different. So I would combine two molds. So I would buy a, a jewelry box crown mold, and I would also have a jewelry tray mold. And you know, for Mother's Day, I would create this crown jewelry mold just to be unique. And that's not something anybody would have because it's something mm -hmm. that I actually put together. So I like to offer unique items to people. So they're not only 
accustomed to what they see everywhere. That's one price point. And I try to be different in the way I create them. So I would mix glitter with colorant, or I would do the sand with something else. So I just try to be different with the, um, especially the resin items. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Tell me a bit about how you became involved in Nudge. With Nudge, <laughs> on Instagram, I remember seeing another small business owner in St. Lucia being part of, of Nudge and showing the items on the Nudge stand. And I just decided to take a chance, <laughs> go on the website and apply. And I didn't really know how big the Nudge brand was until I got this call from the, the local um, person who's organizing it. And there's interviews and, you know, it's something serious and something big. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so yeah, so from the application, we did interviews. And then I was told that I was selected to be on the stall. <laughs> I really did not know how much, how big it was at the time until I became part of the community. <laughs> Sounds great. And what, what so far have been the benefits that you've seen of being part of this Nudge community? Being part of Nudge, um, it really gave me this market research because most of my items are personalized items. That's how I've been operating online. Um, being on the Nudge stall, you would have to create something that's suited to everybody per se, a, a generic item. So it really gave me that opportunity to know what customers are interested in, what customers would like to see, because I, I offer a wide variety of items, like I said. So um, I think Nudge chose which items they thought that would perform best. And I think it was a learning process for both of us that, that eventually I would know how best to suit my clientele, what they are interested in, because sometimes I might think that's the best item and that's not really what they are interested in. So it gave me an opportunity to understand them better. And it just allowed me to reach more people because I would have persons reaching out and saying, oh, I saw your stuff at Massey stores and I wanted to know if you could do this and I wanted to know if you could do that. So it was just an opportunity to reach more people. Danica, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Really amazing. We'll move now a little bit to Tamara, Tamara Gibson out of Barbados. And she's going to tell us a bit about her business. Tamara? Hi, good afternoon. So I have a home fragrance brand here in Barbados and it focuses on really capturing like lifestyle and culture and heritage um, from the island. Uh, most people that are into scents would know about the North American type of scent. So the apples and the pumpkins and so on, that's their culture. Um, in the Caribbean region, we have things like sorrow and, you know, and the sea water and yeah, Bobby and all types of things. And at rum, I have a rum candle, believe it or not. Um, and that's really what uh, this brand is about, celebrating uh, the culture, not just from Barbados, but from the region and capturing it and scent. Scent is probably the most powerful of the senses we have. It goes directly onto the surface of the brain. It, it helps you to recall memories. It is one that goes directly to your emotions and to your wellness system. Um, and I enjoy just bringing, you know, those little joys to people through scent. Really interesting, Tamara. Tell us a bit about how you became involved in business and how you became involved in scent. I didn't want to, if I'm being completely honest. Um, <laughs> so I kind of followed a traditional path. I went to school. I did all the things that your parents said you should do. You got the degrees. You got the really nice jobs. I was enjoying group pension and medical and all those, you know, nice, secure things. And then I came to a point um, like of a crossroads and my life completely changed. One morning I had a really serious conversation with my grandmother and I was discussing the, upper, the idea of going back to school and doing yet another degree. Um, and she shoots at me I, like, a, like a real grandmother would shoot. She almost shoots at me. <laughs> and, you know, she was like, we well, want to do another degree for I teach you nothing. It's time to use your hands, you know, to make a dollar. And I left there feeling, you know, not clear on anything, but I really gave thought to it. And I came home and I, well, I pray a lot. So I did that and I, I tried a few things and stumbled on the candles and that really, really stuck. I enjoyed it. 
you know, and that's how I got into business. I think the first six months of it, I still was like, you know, waiting for the shoe to drop and, you know, still waiting for a job to come. And so, but then after the end of the first year, it was like, I kind of like my groove. So, <laughs> and, you know, the rest is history. Sounds like a beautiful history to me and a lovely smelling history too. Tell us a bit more about some of those scents that you have in your, your lineup. You know, it sounds really interesting, sorrel and so on. Tell me a bit more. Well, um, I do have a signature line of five scents that just happens to be our best sellers. The, that's the East Coast Road. If you've been to Barbados, you know lots of parties happen there. Um, but it's really just a really nice landscape in Barbados. It's probably one of the most picturesque and it has a very distinct smell. Um, I have Barbados rum. Barbados is the birthplace of rum. And so our rum candle smells like a really nice spice age rum. Um, I also have lemongrass. It's a 400 year old remedy. Um, on the island, it was what, you know, the slaves would have used to break fevers and juice by mosquitoes. Um, it's really good for convulsions and um, high blood pressure, etc. And the scent of it actually is very, it has antidepressant properties. So it's really good for aromatherapy. Um, tobacco and sugar cane, first to catch crops of the island. Um, and just recently, uh, we've done, I've done something really nice with the product. At least I, I, I from the feedback, it's, it's really good. We um, introduced augmented reality to the labels. So now you can scan the labels of our candles with your smartphone and actually see the story behind the scent. Um, so you're engaging all of your senses. There's smell, it becomes now a talking piece as it's a decor item in the house. Um, you get to, if you're gifting a friend, you get to, to share the culture. And then the guys that live away from the region, from the island or from the region that may be missing home have a, a, a real strong connection then um, back to the country as well. Sounds great, sounds really wonderful. Where are some of your products sold and, and how have you been enjoying this experience with Nudge and having your, your perks placed on, on the Nudge stalls? Oh, sure. So Native is just two years old. We turned two years old in February this year. And I have a shop located in Pelican Village um, in Barbados. You can find us on social media as well at um, Native Candles BB. That's on Instagram, on Native Caribbean on Facebook, and then www.nativecaribbean.com. Um, that's our website. It's under construction now. We're creating an e-commerce platform, but that's where you can find us. Um, so I've been selling from Pelican and via Instagram a lot, especially during uh, the pandemic. How I got involved with Nudge, uh, the coordinator here in Barbados, she actually reached out to me and asked me if I'd heard of it. And I had it at the time. And so she, you know, forwarded me to the website. And, you know, like Danica said, it was this big thing with interviews and everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I applied and I had the interviews and I was successful and, you know, got into the market stalls. And so, and I, I just have to say thank you to both Massey and the group that created Nudge. And you done a really good thing, Julie, do not stop. I think that this is an excellent program and I can't wait to see how it's going to grow in the region. Mm -hmm. What's your vision for your business? Where do you see your business going uh, in the immediate future, two years down the road and many other years down the road? Um, I am pretty, I'm learning that I'm pretty innovative, I, I guess. I didn't know it was creative until I started a business. I, I kind of learned that recently. Um, so I really see myself um, tapping into the different aspects of my background and seeing how I can tie all of that together through the business. I don't think that any aspect of your life is lost. Um, and so I really like to bring different facets of my life before um, into the business and try then to marry it with what's going on in my country. Like I have a, a good prime minister, you know, she's, she's doing things and she really, you know, is very inspirational uh, in getting you to think outside the box and how small businesses, micro businesses, we really have a part to play, you know, in the economy. And so I want to, you know, I want to be on that train. I want to build Native into something that really gives back, not just to, Barbados, but to the region and then to other entrepreneurs coming up. That's that's why I would like to grow it out into what that looks like. Well, you're going to have to wait to see that, but that's where we're going. 
Okay, and what about, you know, I, I don't know if this experience is one that, that, that you've had just as yet in Nudge, but what about the benefits that you see of interacting with other entrepreneurs from around the region that this community that Nudge has created provides? Uh, you know, it's interacting with, with Danica from St. Lucia, interacting with people in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, how has that been beneficial to you? Well, then um, I'm going to talk about the benefits in two parts, um, both from the interaction and then the benefits that um, I've seen in my business uh, personally. So it's good to be connected to uh, a community of entrepreneurs. Um, and for me, especially, that was important being somebody who didn't really want to be in business. Uh, it was as much a personal journey, growth journey for me. Um, and being in the space, my friends, they're still all, you know, they still all have jobs and so on. Although they're very supportive, shout out to my, my people, um, very supportive. There's nobody like people who are in the space that understand what it means to be an entrepreneur. That support um, has been invaluable. So be, being connected to other entrepreneurs, both here in Barbados and across the region, um, in the Dutch program, um, that, that's been good. That's, I, I've actually done some collaborations with some of the other entre uh, entrepreneurs um, in, the, in the Nudge program and outside of it um, since this all started. And I think that that has been encouraged um, by how we've been brought together in this space. Um, and then the benefits for my company. So I, I would label that under two things. I would say um, operational readiness and capacity planning. Uh, when it comes to the operational readiness part of it. Uh, so having a shop, we are selling, I'm selling directly to customers, but now having to deal with Massey it becomes like a business to business transaction and that takes on a completely different character. So things like barcodes, I'm not selling individual units anymore. I now have to sell cartons of things. Um, and so thinking about that, it's really, you know, maturing the business in a different, a different way. So I'm becoming uh, flexible, I'm becoming versatile. I don't know if you guys know that that happens to our businesses, but I know everybody touches on the access to market and um, and as well as the, the visibility and awareness. But I find the behind the scenes operations really have to be, you know, thought about when you're entering into a program like this. So that's that's been really good. My inventory system has had to been, you know, upgraded and so on to be able to have items that are out. Um, not paid for directly in a store. You pay for things be, as items leave. You no, know, you have to have like a a, a back end system that can handle invoicing and payment terms and all of that. So that growth has really been good for me, um, and I love that exposure. Uh, when it comes then to uh, capacity planning, so I've had to revisit that. Um, if you're going to be seriously talking to a massive Mr. Ward, I hope I have to have that conversation with you. Um, <laughs> about <laughs> supplying Massey's no joke Massey's no small friend I, I must be able to show these people I can't sustainably supply the numbers right and if it's sell out I gotta have it there in like you know 15 minutes so I've had to go back to looking at you know capacity how can we produce that skill sustainably and I want to say that the program with Nudge allows you to do this in a very manageable way it is one thing to throw a micro entrepreneur into like a uh, scaling environment, but it can kill you. It can cash trap the business. There's so many other things that can happen there. But the Nudge program allows you to do that in a very bite-sized way that I certainly appreciate. I get to feel out things. I get to try um, methods of doing this whole business-to-business -business, um, relationship and kind of like avoid errors that, you know, would kind of like eat up your money and so on before you get a chance to really figure out what it is uh, that you're doing. And then finally, the data. Uh, if I had to go to a bank now, the data is actual. Eh? Um, I can have a strong conversation about the value the product provides in the market, which are the big movers, the idea of what the sales look like in real numbers and not just pretty projections that you spit out there. Um, I can say X amount of revenue has been earned in this place or that place. And, you know, being in the Nudge program helps me to see, to say, well, uh, well, hey guys, I was in Massey. If they think I did enough, uh, like, you listen to me, eh? <laughs> Massey had me there, you know. Um, just that name drop, as well as the opportunity to actually move the product. I find that that is something um, quite powerful for a business. 
Uh, and yeah, so I'm, I'm going to stop now. I can go on forever. I just really think the program is a pretty good one. And I'm happy to be here. Tamara, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, sharing your story and sharing all of these benefits that that you've received it's been really beautiful to hear it i just want to ask Danica one final thing before we start to wrap things up you know the opportunity to share and collaborate with people around the region is very interesting and you know one thing that i've definitely noted is that there are a lot of women involved in this project uh how do you feel about interacting with your counterparts your, the women from around the region and, and what kind of benefits can that bring to your business, do you think? I think um, as an entrepreneur, we're really on our own doing almost everything. So having that group to support you and to, we, we always share um, um, training, we always share advice on certain things. So it's good to have that, that support system for me as a, as a business owner and to also learn from other people too, because there are some people who, who have been doing it longer than me. So it was important for me to learn from other people and also to just collaborate and have that kind of support system. Danica, thank you so much for sharing with us, Danica. Out of St. Lucia, Tamara out of Barbados, Anya, Julie and Gervais, thanks to you as well for sharing the vision behind and sharing uh, you know, the benefits that you're trying to bring to the community and sharing the vision. Entrepreneurs, thank you for sharing your passion with, with all of us. We really appreciate it. So now we'll go out with a little bit of music and we'll just leave the social media handles of Nudge here for you. Nudge at Nudge Caribbean on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. We want to say thank you to our funding partners, Massey, CDB Caribbean Development Bank, and the United Nations. Website is nudgecaribbean.com. If any entrepreneurs joining us or looking at the program right now want to join, there is information on the join us form uh, and section on the website. All of the information is there and you fill out the form and maybe you can be just like Danica and Tamara. Hopefully that's the, the idea. So thank you very much for, for being part of this. We're thrilled to close this event with the music video for the song Cassandra, written and performed by the Dynamic Caribbean Musical Talents Freetown Collective and Static, and produced in collaboration with Nudge Caribbean and featuring a selection of Nudge's entrepreneurs' brands. Thank you very much. Sugar, honey, sweet water, yellow, blue, queen, daughter, mama, sister, friend, lover. This is Cassandra This is Cassandra Act like a sauna Just like a mama Feed me papaya Oshuna no ya She no push over You should know better If you come in here Oh your skin glow What a melanin Oh you're bright so Oh when you're thinking You make my heart go Titting, ting, titting Oh yeah, oh yeah You say you love me Mama, why you? My one and only Mama Cassandra